What is going on, Loud and Proud Crowd? Hopefully, you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. So, we are back here again with the Longhorn 12 Valve Project. If you're wondering why we're calling it the Longhorn, uh, 12 valve project. Well, we are extremely far from done with the interior, but we're going to be doing basically a longhorn conversion. We got a saddle brown dash, a new saddle brown headliner that I stitched all myself. We've got the little accent leather handles and all the stitching and all that tedious work that is very involving. I've been doing all of that myself. And we're going to be doing the seats and carpet and all center console box and custom, all that stuff and sound system but here's what we need to figure out first though and that's whether or not i officially want to go with longhorn seats or have a custom interior shop do like a diamond stitch pattern and i don't know just make it super cool it'll be the same brown of course but it'll just be like insane so let me know down in the comments below should i just order longhorn seats and try to make the brackets convert and stuff or take these seats, have them ditch the cloth, so make sure they put new cushioning in them, and then just have them custom built. Still Longhorn color, Longhorn feel, but just custom built for this truck. That's like, you cannot get these seats from any other truck. Like this is built to the truck. Maybe put some like custom stuff in the headrest, like have the Loud and Proud logo right there that says uh, second gen Longhorn or something like that, or Longhorn 12. I don't know. I don't know. I'll come up with some ideas. Comment down below though. What do you think I should do? So now back to the rust on the frame and getting that situation solved. So back here I've got some little wire brushes and essentially all I've been doing is working the frame and getting it ready for chassis saver. This section I really sanded down really, really heavy for about 15 minutes. I mean inside, outside, all that stuff just to coat it so you guys can see kind of like what it's going to look like when it's done, which is really, really good. So um, what we're going to be working on now is I'm going to work on sanding even more of the frame right there and just getting that prepped and all ready to go because I want to get this done and I want to get a bed put back on here. Now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with the bed. The bed I'm planning on putting back on the truck. However, the bed does have a lot of flaws. When I say a lot of flaws, I'm talking it's got some dents, it's got some small rust spots starting in a few different places. And I just hope that it's salvageable, like at a body shop. A good body shop will make it work. They'll get new bedsides if they have to or whatever the case may be and they'll, they'll make it work. I'm just hoping it's not too much and it's gonna cost me an arm and a leg just to get the bed perfect again. I'm hoping it's not, but you just don't know. Not to mention I did add another little dent to it on accident, pulling the bed off with the tractor. Let me show you actually what happened here. I don't have the bed here, but essentially what happened was when the bed was coming up, you know, the bedsides that curve down, right? Well. The opposite side, it snagged on this bolt on the other side and kind of bent it down a little bit, about two inches, two or three inches out of place. And it kind of gave it a crinkle, which sucks. But, you know, the bed, it's not like the bed was in perfect shape as it is, but I'm hoping that it's salvageable. And if it's not, we're gonna have fun finding a new bed. So I'm gonna get the camera propped up and let's get to working on this truck. Everybody, so about an hour and a half later, I did get to working on the frame pretty good. And it's a little bit foggy in here because I just air blew off like all the loose rust off the, you know, frame. Anyway, so I did get the frame cleaned up pretty good. You can see it's all pretty smoothened out now. There's no rough, crusty stuff on it. And there is everything that came off of it, which I'm actually surprised and impressed and if you look at this most of this is not like big chunky rust like there's some dirt and like rubber and stuff mixed in there from other parts laying around the shop but for the most part it's just like the stuff that i sanded off it was so fine and it's basically just like the surface rush starting pretty much mostly got rid of all that so the next step is going to be coating some of this frame and what i think i'm going to do is basically coat start by doing the outside Everything, including the hangers, not do the leaf packs quite yet. Because I'm not sure if that's what, not the route I want to go with those. I might just like rust only and paint those once I get these sanded down a little bit better. But I was mostly focusing on the frame today. And it was due chassis saver and pretty much everything except for like, you know, the bolts and nuts and everything that has to do with the suspension components. And then of course not going to chassis saver the hitch because depending on whatever might happen down the road with the truck, Maybe somebody's gonna want to take it off and I don't want to like chassis saver all around these bolts and stuff and 
mess that up. But anyways, and then of course just finish this side and do the same thing on this side. So we're gonna get to doing that right now. Hopefully we can get some progress. I'm not sure how much more time I have out here because it's already getting late, but I'm gonna do my best to put a little bit of a dent in it. So let's get started. <laughs> So I'm stopping the time lapse and real quick, I'm just gonna let you guys know that this is probably where I'm gonna be wrapping it up for the night. But let me kind of show you where we got progress and where I didn't in kind of explain everything. First thing I'd like to note is that we did get the other tow mirror on the truck. So no more one tow mirror, one uh, teeny tiny OEM mirror. And then over here, let's start on this side of the frame. So this isn't the side that I started on. This is kind of the side I ended on for the night. It's already about nine o'clock, 9.30 and I still have to edit this video and schedule it and get bags packed and ready to go out of town and travel a few hours in the morning. So I've got to get this wrapped up for the night. I wish I could have done more, but I just can't. I hope you guys can understand. But so what I did is I worked on part of the mounts here where the bed's gonna sit on. Didn't finish this side. Did a double coat on the section that I had done the other day that was well dried. I mean, it's been at least 48 hours since it was done. Then over here, I started on that. Didn't finish it, of course because this hanger, I didn't coat that because I want to sand that more first because I just, I'm not like content with the way that it is right now before I coat it. Same with this side, the hanger. It's not in bad shape, but I want to sand it just a little bit more, give it a little more TLC before I coat it because once you coat it, you ain't doing any more sanding. So I want to get that done. The top part, I didn't get done yet because again, I want to do a little bit more sanding. I didn't give that a ton of attention. I gave it plenty to probably coat it because all it says for the chassis saver is apply directly to rust and it stops rust on site. Well, I like to sand my stuff down first just because I don't 100% believe that. Uh, but anyway, so then I got this side all coated on the outside, up under the cab there a little bit. And that's kind of where we ended on this side. But it looks really good, doesn't it? Like it's going to look really good when it's done. But I'm going to basically get all this section done and then I'm going to work on the progress of doing everything under the cab and out to the front. I'm actually even going to take the wheels and tires off the front and lift up the front end a little bit so I can get the frame better. Um, but other than that, that's probably where we're going to wrap it up for the night. There's a couple more things that I really want to touch on. And that's the fact that we are giving away our 1997 budget build Chevy. We are giving that thing away. If you go to our website right now, there's probably, I want to say seven days left maybe. So one week left, six, seven days left. Every $5 is five entries to win. We're doing a super high entry amount and we're running it a really, really short giveaway because this is not one of our you know, big diesel giveaways like what we do. This is just kind of like a short little in between because I'm like, you know what? We've never done a Project Chevy before, you know, like made a project out of it other than the Duramax months ago. So we did the Chevy build, the gasser build, got that done and I'm like, I don't know what to do with it otherwise. I'm like, I'd rather not sell it. I'll just give it away and see if you know, one of the fans that happened to like that um, truck enter within the 12 days that we started, you know, the giveaway and then just kind of being like, you know, whoever wins it wins it, but just running it real short because we know it's not gonna be necessarily a super popular giveaway for us. But we figured what the heck, we'll give somebody the chance to just own it for a couple bucks. And in terms of this truck right here, before we go, I like the stock ride height in 20 by 12s in 33s it doesn't rub on stock suspension. I don't know if it's something about this truck that's different or if stock second gens can actually clear that. I don't know, but I didn't do anything to the suspension. I don't see a spacer up front or any kind of suspension leveling kit and it doesn't rub. So I don't know, I don't know what the deal is with that, but I, I like the setup, but what should we go with in terms of suspension? I know we still got to get the paint and body work done first. That's my next priority over like suspension, but I do really want to get some suspension stuff done at some point here. I'm thinking about doing a five inch kit plus a two and a half inch spacer up front or coil to have a total of seven and a half, almost eight inches of clearance, you know, front to back pretty much and then leveled out like that. And I think that's gonna be a really good look. Now, 
The only thing about that is now we're gonna be able to fit like 38s by 1550s under this in like 24 or 26 by 14s or 16s. The thing would be a monster, like a total monster. So let me know, do you guys like that idea? Do you not like the idea? If you do, please let me know down below. And also another thing I'm trying to figure out, if the bed's not fixable, is a flatbed a good or a bad idea? You guys let me know down in the comment section below. I'm not set on doing a flatbed on this truck. I'm pretty much just planning on doing the bed again. And my goal still is, because even if we do a flatbed, it's gonna cost us like 3,500 bucks. And with that kind of money, I'm pretty sure they can figure out how to use the bed again and make it in perfect shape for 3,500 bucks. So. That's my plan as of now, but let me know. Do you guys like the idea of a flatbed on this? Or is that a no-go because we already have a flatbed on the channel? Let me know down in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. We are gonna get this thing knocked out. We're gonna get it done. Stay tuned. We've got a ton of new parts coming. I'm talking a boatload, so stay tuned. More stuff for the interior, more stuff for the exterior, more stuff for the suspension, drivetrain, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned, guys. It's gonna get good. Thank you so much. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.